two, one, going live, going live, testing, testing, test, 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 testing, 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 test, 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 testing, test, Ickles, a test, Ickles. Welcome everyone to episode 710 of the Daily Mother a Swole, the most muscular swole cast, beard cast, broadcast, gain cast, man cast, pimp cast, and sleaze cast in the realm. Because when I flex, you flex, we all flex our biceps, aka we all. Oh, 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 oh. So if you got on, if you understood any of that, it was just pretty much me saying, what the fuck is up, fam? It was me saying, what's up, Monday? What up, Monday? What's going on for the quad chipple cast? That's right. The chub nipple cast. Oh, hold on. Let me rearrange the bifocals. Welcome Instagram, Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. Everyone that is watching live. Thank you for joining me. Let's come in through the door. I hope everyone enjoyed yesterday's episode. And as promised, the episode that Mike was referring to yesterday was episode 434. So if you want to go back and check out that episode, uh, that's the one that we're talking about yesterday. And it was a great episode. It was a long episode. And I would love to hear your feedback. If you enjoyed the longer episode, if you enjoyed the call in, going to be having a bunch more uh, call in shows coming up in the near future. So I hope you enjoyed them. Uh, but what we're going to do is going to jump right into the phone call from the very beginning. So just stay tuned for that. Always trying new things here on the game train. But just so you all know, we're going straight to Boston Mass and we're getting yoked at every fucking stop along the way. It's like a marathon, only they're not handing out little little cups of water and Gatorade. They're handing out cups of grass fed beef. We're on the journey, fam. We're on that gain tip. We're on that game tip, fam. I'm fucking amped. I'm amped today. You ever have one of those days where you just feel, you just feel sexy? You just feel sexy, right? I feel sexy today. I feel sexy today. Cups of bacon. Oh, I like that. Cups of bacon. Just bacon grease. How long is my hair? Long? That's a great question. Faith on uh, YouTube. What's up, Faith? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. For sure. If I make the journey, can we hit the iron paradise, brother? Your content is immense. Uh, do you mean, well, I'll, I'll be doing some meetups soon. I'm not going to be doing like uh, workouts necessarily, but I'm ready to do uh, do some meetups in the near future. My schedule is all over the place, so it's hard for me to, to block out time for um, for stuff like that but I want to start doing some events, but for sure. Okay. So today's episode, uh, everyone coming on in just say hi, float some biceps. Let's, uh, let's get the good word out. Just posted two videos. If you didn't check them out, well, one video in two places, Instagram and Facebook. And it was a clip from episode 700 and say 706 about macros and knowing where you are knowing where you are. And just to tie that in, so if you are following me on Facebook or Instagram, that post is knowing where you are so you can make adjustments to go somewhere else. A lot of you don't know where you are in terms of calories, in terms of training. You don't know where you are, so how can any information on changing your approach or adding variety, how could that possibly help you if you don't know where you are currently? And what that post kind of gets into is those of you that are trying to figure out how many calories you're consuming, those of you that are thinking of the higher level rather than the lower level, you're not focusing as much on what you're eating rather than how much. And if you're counting calories and you're coming at it from that aspect, but you're looking for how many calories to consume, should I eat? increase my calories, how many should I consume or uh, whether to gain weight or lose weight, but you don't know what you're doing now. You have information at your fingertips in terms of figuring out what you're doing now. Start analyzing what you're doing now. What foods are you consuming? 
where are your protein sources? Uh, how much fat are you consuming? How many calories are you consuming in a day? What, how much water are you drinking a day? How much sleep are you getting? Start looking into your, um, start looking into your current habits before you start thinking about changing your habits. I think we get too wrapped up in what to do next. Like what next? What about what you're doing now? What about what you're doing currently? And then you'll have a better idea on how to manipulate things. Okay. Based on your, your goals. Yesterday's um, just another, some feedback on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube and you haven't dropped a thumbs up or, um, or hit that subscribe button, make sure you like drop some thumbs up. If you're watching live everywhere, I appreciate the thumbs. I appreciate the attention. Same with you, Twitch and Facebook. Uh, Michael on YouTube, yesterday's cast was badass. Motivation comes and goes. Not every day you're going to have that drive. He wasn't the fastest, the strongest, the smartest starting from day one, but he had dedication. He totally did and totally does. Yesterday's cast, if you guys missed 709, it was a long one. It was a long one, but it was a great interview with Mike. And what I'm going to continue to do, what I'm going to continue to do with guests and with these special episodes is give you that kind of reflection and give you that kind of inspiration and hope and that positivity in your fitness and in your life, because a lot of you feel like you're alone and a lot of you feel like you're the only one in your situation when everyone's dealing with the same shit, everyone's dealing with the same shit. Everyone's dealing with their own problems. Everyone's got issues. Everyone's got issues and problems. You're not the only person that has a problem. You're not the only person that has a job. You're not the only person that has kids. You're not the only person that has these kinds of scheduling conflicts. You're not fucking special like that. We all do. We all do. Whether it's what we create for ourselves, we just keep busy or, you know, we do what we have to do. Some of you have to work two jobs because you have to provide for other people besides just yourself. And that's fine. Like, it doesn't matter what your situation is. Your situation is what it is because it's on you. It's your fault. Like whatever your choices were in your life, that brought you to where you are. And it's up to you to make the next move every day. So what do you want, right? So what do you want out of your life? What do you want those? What do you want that result to be? And then you could figure out what the choices you need to make today that are going to lead you to that outcome. So that's that's pretty straightforward. But yesterday's episode, if you didn't catch 709, definitely go back and watch that one or listen to it. So those of you that are tuning in, SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts, you can listen to these episodes and catch 709. It's a great it's a great place to go. That episode will be great for you to just light that fire under your ass, especially today for a Monday, especially today for a Monday. Uh, I had a, I had a quote. Let's see. I had a quote that I wrote that I had here somewhere that I wanted to, that I wanted to share. Let's see if I have that. If I remember what, which one that was. Oh, uh... I wrote it down here on one of my cards. I was going to put it on my wall. Let's see if I got that here. Working while listening. Hell yeah, Dennis. Sweet. What's up, Papa Pimpin? Boston in the house. Boston, Mass. Here we go. Here we go. This is a quote from, uh, from Adam Osborne. And it's, quote, you can't learn anything being perfect. You can't learn anything being perfect. In other words, you have no lesson. You have no response. You have no counteraction. You have no feedback if you're doing things correctly all the time. Those hard lessons and those dips, right? Those, those failures, those plateaus that you're hitting right when your weight loss stalls or your muscle growth stalls or your strength stalls, those periods where I say, where I've told you that quote that I always like to think about, that's when people quit, or this is when people quit. Whenever you have that low moment, that part in your day or your life, that's fucking shitty. That really sucks. 
when you have those days that really fucking suck in those moments, that's when you have to push through. Those are the most important times for you to step the fuck up and do something and dig yourself back out. That's when it builds character. And when you train, when you don't want to, there are certain key things that you're going to find as you go through your fitness journey that are the game changers and the character builders. And one of those things is training when you don't want to. When you don't want to work out, going and working out. That is the key. That will build your discipline. Go. When you don't want to work out, that's when you need to go and execute. And you are going to learn a lot about yourself. And you're going to learn a lot about your body. And you're going to get through anything else that comes to pass. Because if you can train when you don't feel like it, you can do anything because let me break it to you. You ain't going to feel like it half the fucking time or more. It gets old. You know, you're, you're going to get busy and you're going to have obligations and you're not going to want to go. You're going to want to do other things like relax or hang out or do something else that you're passionate about or do work or spend time with your kids or your wife or your girlfriend or boyfriend or husband, whatever. And you're not going to want to go to the gym, but then you go and you're not going to regret it. You're not going to fucking regret it. You're going to love it. You're never going to regret a workout, but you're going to learn how many of those workouts that you didn't want to do were some of the best workouts in your fucking life. Like you'll have the best damn workouts. And those are the game changing workouts. Those are the ones that really um, will open up the floodgates for you getting results and for you being consistent. That's what's really going to build that habit when you actually get into the whole process and mindset of working out whether you feel like it or not and separating the emotion from that. So that brings me to the main topic. Um you know, ramps up into it. Cause that's a great forward, so to speak for what I want to talk about today was how to find your training phase. And what I mean by training phase, cause we're just talking about getting consistent and that foundation, the basics, right? It's similar to nutrition where you need to know what you're eating before you start worrying about how much you're eating, right? You have to be eating the right shit before you start counting shit. And if you don't have the right foods going in, it doesn't matter how much like your the base level, like what you're actually consuming is low quality. You're not getting it done from the start. Doesn't matter about the volume. Don't worry about counting. Stop eating the fucking poison. Right. So it comes down. It's a lot more than just how much you need to really be a, a practitioner in figuring out what your body should be consuming. Uh, the same thing goes with your training. You need to have the foundations right. So if you're consistent and you're going to the gym regularly, okay, good. You have a great head start. You're a step ahead of the game, okay? Because a lot of you aren't consistent. That's the problem. It's not knowing what to do. It's not having a good workout program. It's not having a gym membership or not being able to work out at home. It's not fucking going regularly. It's not going six days a week or five days a week or four days a week or hell, even three days a week. You're just not going. How many people don't work out but still have a gym membership? How do you think Planet Fitness and these places that charge so little every month, how do you think they stay in business? By making it so inexpensive, you don't want to give it up, but you never go. But so rather than Focus on all the other details on what you're doing or how many reps or how many sets. First off, are you consistent? Like, are you actually going? So the foundation of your fitness is getting onto a schedule and making it part of your habit, making it a part of your, um, of who you are and what you do in terms of your life and your schedule. Then finding your training phase. And when I say training phase, it's not bulking. It's not cutting. It's where are you in your life? And this is like, this is not an age thing. This is a, are you 20 to 25? Are you looking to maybe put on a lot of size because you're just naturally skinny? Are you looking to get rid of weight that you've had since you were in high school or college that you gained? Are you 
45 to 50 or 55? Like, are you dealing with repetitive injuries or car accidents or prior injuries from sports, from college? Are you losing a lot of weight? Are you post-pregnancy? Are you trying to just body build? Have you been working out for a long time and you're trying to manipulate your program and mix things up? Or have you never worked out before and you're about average, but you need more strength and heart disease runs in your family. Like all of you have your own specific situation. And what I want you to be aware of is that your fitness journey is kind of like chapters in your life. The way you train when you're 20 is going to be different than when you train when you're 30. I still lift and I bodybuild and I love to build muscle, but it's not as important to me as it was when I was 20. I have other priorities now than I did then. Not to mention, I have all those years compounded of training. So my body feels differently when I work out now after being under duress and stress and being torn down and beaten up and, um, you know, strained pretty, pretty much non, pretty much nonstop with some little like, you know, you know, down shifts of, of, uh, intensity or down shifts of, of, you know, force and overload, but pretty much nonstop for 15, 16, 17 years. I train differently because my body has just been through a lot more shit and I get, you know, I don't want to be crippled. I don't want to do legs until I can't fucking stand up. I want to be able to get off the toilet. I want to be in pain. You know, the same things are important to me then aren't important to me now. They're not priorities. So you have to know where you are in your life and you have to understand that it's okay to shift goals. It's okay to not want to be absolutely massive. It's okay to not want to lose a ton of weight. It's okay to bulk. It's okay to cut. It's okay to not have abs. It's okay to have abs. You know, it's okay to have what you want if you're willing to work for it, but you have to understand like what you need, right? Like if you need, I get this like hair somewhere coming from somewhere. Like you need mobility. It's great to work on mobility when you're in your 20s, but when you're in your 30s, 40s, and 50s, like it's really more of a priority than it is to build a ton of muscle. So you have to really be honest with where you are in your life and work your training around that and, and, and organize your training around that. Jose Gonzalez, I want to be healthier for my family, but more importantly to me to have a longer, healthier life. That's great. That's great. Everyone's going to have their own goals. Not everyone has a, not everyone has a family. Not everyone, not everyone has others dependent on them for, you know, or to whatever extent, but if you have people that depend on you for support and for guidance and, you know, children, then you need to be, you need to be healthier for more than just yourself. You see people walk in, punch in and leave because they save on their health insurance by going so many times a month. Yeah, there's a lot of people that just go to the gym and like their GPS tracks where they are. So it shows that they're at the gym, but they just go in there and they watch fucking Netflix on the Wi-Fi and stuff. I've heard about people going to the gym. They swipe in, they sit in the lobby, they have like a smoothie and they watch Netflix and they leave. And it tracks for their insurance because they logged in. It doesn't track what they do. In the gym, it just shows that they swiped into the gym. They checked in at that day. It doesn't show how long they were there for or what exercise they did. Eventually, it probably will. Eventually, like when you have your thumbprint, it'll probably, you know, you'll scan it and the machines will track you or you have your card or a chip or something on your bracelet and it'll track you and it'll know like how many reps you did or how many sets you did. And, you know, in the future, future machines, you can track that. They have things that do that already, but with free weights, you know, you're going to have to have a lot of like biosensors that can check your form and, you know, what's the purpose, right? It's just a scam. It's just a scam. Insurance is so fucked up in this country that that's just one little, that's just one little part of it. As long as they can make money, they'll have you do whatever. They'll pretend, you know, hey, if you go to the gym, we'll give you a better rate. Fuck. It's because... <laughs> Let's see. I need to work out to recover from an injury and I feel like it isn't getting better. It just takes time and consistency. Love your shows. Swole. Thanks, Zach. I appreciate it. Yeah, th that's another thing is that a lot of people don't realize that working out to recover from an injury is important. 
And if you're in your, uh, those types of training phases of recovery of, um, rehabilitation or prehab or doing some kind of corrective exercise or doing more yoga and mobility. Like if you're stiff and you have issues, then you need to back off the intensity. You need some, some patience and realize that even if you're 50, you're still going to live to be 80, 90 or hundred. So don't train, don't shift gears or give up when you're 50 or think that you can't build muscle and lift heavy when you're 50. Like you can do those things. Just make sure that you're bringing along mobility. You're not losing sight of the fact that your movement and that balance is extremely important. Don't forget that. I, a uh, dude, I eat healthy all day, eggs, veggie shake, then brown rice and a protein twice ghee and curry. I wake up starving and chow peanut butter. Well, first off, don't have peanut butter. At least have almond butter. Ideas to stop waking up starving. Uh, you're just not eating enough food. I mean, eggs, protein, some fat, veggie shake, just some veggies. I don't know what that means. Brown rice is pretty unfulfilling. Have sweet potatoes instead and a protein. I don't know what that is. You're probably just not eating enough calories or you need some more carbs there or some better fats. Maybe need some more fats because it doesn't sound like you have a lot. You have some ghee and you have some eggs. What kind of meat are you having? Like lean meat or are you having fatty meat? Dennis Dale, I'm lifting more at 54 than high school. Drink a ton of water. It could be dehydration too. You could be starving because you're dehydrated. That's very common. Chicken shrimp. Well, chicken and shrimp aren't satisfying. Like those are not filling foods. Chicken's not that filling and shrimp is like, that's not a very fulfilling food and they're very lean. You might need some fattier sources of meat. If you're eating animal protein, why not like grass fed beef? You get like fattier cuts. Guillermo. You're such an inspiration. I've implemented <clears throat> some changes in my life. I work out like a beast and I feel great. Thank you for doing what you, oh, thanks bro. Thank you for doing what you do. I appreciate it. Thank you for the, thank you for the review and the feedback. I'm so bad at water, been trying. Well, that could be it, Brandon. If you're eating and you feel like you're waking up hungry, if you're not hydrated, then you're gonna feel hungry. See what happens is, the thirst mechanism in your body sometimes becomes so weak because you're not responding to it. So your body will tell you, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, but you don't give it enough fluid. So it realizes that it's not getting the answer and the response that it needs from telling you that it's thirsty. So it starts signaling hunger. And then you start feeling hungry because it gets moisture and fluids when you, um, uh, when you eat food, right? You're drinking water with food or you're eating food that has moisture. So you're getting fluids. Usually if you chug more water before your meal, you won't be as hungry. So I would go, go nuts on the water a little bit more and try getting at least a gallon a day. I would say about a gallon. If you aim for it, it's not bad for you. It's good for you. Drink plenty of water. Yeah. Try that. Try that, fam. Yeah, so in terms of how to find your training phase, I want you all to think, what are your goals? Those of you that are watching live, put down in the comments what your training goal is. Are you trying to bulk up? Or are you trying to trim down? And I'm what I mean by trimming is like, are you trying to get rid of some body fat or are you trying to put on size? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to bulk or are you trying to cut? Like, what are you trying to do right now? Feelings on keto diet. A lot of people like the keto diet. It's not for me personally. I need some carbs in my life. I need some sweet potatoes. But I do a lot of fat. I do a high fat diet though for sure. Trying to trim down body fat myself. Did you ever hear if we drink tons of water at the same time, it isn't effective as small sips more often? I'm not sure about that because when you drink more water, there's more pressure. So it'll push it through your system a little bit more. Uh, sometimes if you just sip on some water, it'll just kind of like flop around and it won't get make its way into the intestines as easily. Just drink it. Who cares? Stupid details. Just drink water. Just drink. 
just drink consistently through the day. Don't like wait. Oh, I haven't, I haven't consumed my gallon today. You only had a cup. So you just drink an entire gallon right before bed and you feel sick Just spread out. Cut, I've been bulking for 32 years. I've been bulking for 32 years. Nicholas on Facebook, mine is to lose a ton of fat and just overall get healthier over time. Eventually bulk up and get swole fam. Cut, but maintain strength. That's not going to happen. If you're cutting, you're going to lose some strength. Maintain as best you can, but you're going to lose strength. What are your three favorite lower back exercises? Just deadlifts, deadlifts, and I like deadlifts. That's what you need for lower back. Deadlifts are great. Even things like low bar squats, Romanian deadlifts are great. Those are all great for lower back. I'm not a fan of back hyperextensions. I think those are fucking awful. Bump, bump, bump. When I did my last cut, I lost a lot of mass because too much cardio and low calorie crap. If you're doing a natural cut, you got to go real slow. You got to go real slow with the cut. It takes time. You got to go real slow, real slow, real slow with the cut. All right. So reflect on that a little bit today, fam. Reflect on that. Reflect on where you are in your life, whether or not you're trying to bulk, you're trying to cut, but where are you in terms of your mobility? Are you getting up in years? Like, don't fall behind on this shit. The other day we were talking about not waiting uh, to take, to take action on your mobility because you're going to be fucking old. You're going to be fucking old and you're going to be hurt. And I am, I'm, I'm so fervent with the mobility stuff and being mobile when you're older because i because i've seen it and i've trained this this geriatric age group that's just fucking wiped out with stiffness like they just can't move they just can't move and i really can't tell you enough how important it is to keep your mobility like you'll fucking die what are thoughts on wearing the vibram shoes when working out I wear them all the time when I work out. So I think highly of it. I love that. I love them. I wouldn't do jumping with them, but squats and lifting. I think people need to fucking get on the actual Vibrams and stop taking off your shoes and deadlifting in socks or squatting in socks or this stupid fucking shit you see in the gym. I hate that. Everyone takes off their shoes and deadlifts and socks. Get some fucking Vibrams. Why are you in socks? You're slipping around like an idiot. Go barefoot, if anything. Fucking socks. Stupid looking, too. This is a pet peeve. Just fucking take off your shoes. Get better footwear. Or just take it all off. Your ugly-ass stupid socks. Deadlifting socks. Now I'm pissed off. Now I'm angry. What's a guesstimate time frame for cutting? That depends. That depends. Most people cut for competitions and it takes 12 to 16 weeks. That's three to four months. Everyone wants it really quick. And a lot of people that do competitions are taking anabolics and things that maintain mass artificially as they go through a cut. You do a natural cut, you're going to lose a lot of size. You're going to get flat. Natural bodybuilding shows, you want to see who's taking sauce. Look at a natural bodybuilding show. People are skinny. They look emaciated and starved because they are. Your body does not want to maintain muscle when you're in that much of a caloric deficit because it thinks it's fucking dying. So it's trying to save resources, not trying to maintain muscle and, you know, be shredded. Your body wants to live and survive. So when you're getting that lean, you're going against survival mechanisms. That's why it's so hard. I'm cutting only five, one and almost one sixty. no good. So it's lifting and body weight exercises with yoga every morning and I'm eating good food martial arts every day papa you are the best thank you for what you're doing thank you aaron i appreciate the kind words well lifting body weight exercise with yoga yeah lifting and yoga is super key super key fam it's so simple you just stick to those things you see so much progress just with that alone every time i do rack pulls above the knee i 
unironically get a massive boner? <laughs> Can you recommend which type Vibram? Uh, no, you're gonna have to try and see what works best for you. I like the classics, I like the slippers. They're the most minimal. I don't like the Velcro ones on top personally. Thinking on hitting the shoulders tonight, what other weight training would you do with it? With shoulders? It depends on what your split is. I can't answer that just on that question. I don't know what your training split is now. You could do shoulders by themselves, no problem. Depends on what you've done this week and what your goals are and your experience and what exercise you're trying to do and what kind of volume you're going to do and <gasps> many different factors. You see, those are things that a lot of you get stuck on, but you ask like a complicated question and you think it's so simple. So there's simple things that people complicate and there's complicated things that people simplify. And that's one of those things that's very complicated. That seems simple. It's like, what else should I train with shoulders? You might not have realized how many different factors can add into why you would or would not do that. But there's a lot of reasons not to mention, like that's a complicated question that was asked simply, but then a lot of simple content is complicated like you know how many calories it's like don't worry about all these different things like you got to figure out like do the elimination diet and then figure out what foods are best for you and then you know do the foundational stuff first so don't complicate the simple shit and don't oversimplify the complicated stuff just keep it all simple keep it all simple you want to get bigger lower reps heavier weight basic exercises push pull squat fucking like it's very simple. You don't need a lot of variety. You just need to work harder in a lot of ways to maximize natural potential, at least for that base, at least for that foundation. Love your podcast snaps and Insta stories. Your attitude towards health and wellness is very motivating. What's your go-to healthy snack when you're in a snacking mood? Much love, Steve. Thanks, Steve. I don't snack a lot. I love dark chocolate. I mean, if you're talking about like junk food and stuff, I love dark chocolate or frozen fruit. You know, instead of ice cream and stuff like that, but I don't snack a lot. Well, I guess eh, I get like olives. I love olives, garlic, you know, stuffed olives or, you know, olive stuffed with garlic and different types of olives. I just go and I get random ones sometimes and I see what I like. Um, let's see. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. You know, frozen, like I said, frozen fruit, dark chocolate. You know, it's better than eating ice cream. Like, boy, like if you really have a craving for ice cream, like a craving for ice cream, just eat a frozen banana. Like, no joke. Eat a frozen banana. It's like, it, it's like fucking banana ice cream. You don't even have to have the ice cream part. Just have a frozen banana. It tastes like fucking banana ice cream. I love it. I love grapes and clementines. I love fruit. Fruit, veggies, and meat. Yum, yum, yum. And sweet potatoes. Pickles are mine. Pickles are, yeah, I mean, they're salty, but I mean, as long as you don't, you know, you have that good balance and you're exercising and hydrated. As long as they you know, don't have like a lot of preservatives, you can make your own. They're delicious. How do you find your true volume? Because your one RM percentages will always change week to week. I don't know what your, that, that question doesn't make sense to me. How do you find your true volume? Because your one rep max percentages will always change. Your true volume? What do you mean? Like how much volume you should be doing? It depends on what your goal is. If you want more muscle growth, you need more volume. That's why bodybuilders split up their body parts, like chest on certain days and back on certain days, because it takes a lot of time to get the, same, the amount of volume to stimulate that hypertrophy in the muscle fibers. It's a different goal than strength. I'm not as strong as a lot of people probably think I am, but I don't care. I don't go to be as strong as possible. I go to build muscle and have shape and aesthetics and, you know, have fun and be casual about it. Um, but most people don't understand the physiology behind creating that kind of inflammation that will spurn muscle size rather than strength. You can be smaller than someone and be stronger than them because the body will work differently. It depends on what your goal is. How strong do you have to be in this world? I think some people really overestimate how strong they need to be. You know, they just train for strength, strength, strength. I mean, you go so hard with strength all the time. You can hurt yourself and then fucking be injured the rest of your life. And how good is, 
how good are you now? You used to power lift and now you can barely walk because your back hurts and your shoulder and everything. So how good was it being strong for those years when you're like weak as shit now because you're fucked up your body? So how strong do you really need to be and how hard do you have to train for strength? Like you do bodybuilding, you'll be strong enough, plenty bodybuilding and yoga to integrate. Like you're good. What are your thoughts on the rack on what rack the rack, like the torture device that rips off limbs. What are your thoughts on the rack? I don't know what that means. What rack gets weird. I never know what to expect some of these questions. Uh, I have a good base. We'll take back one, maybe one more question or two. So do light workouts once in a while? Yeah, sure. What's your best advice for someone who just started weightlifting? Add yoga in early. Don't wait to start doing yoga. I have a good base about to start a powerlifting routine for more strength and power in my lower body for my MMA training. God, everyone does MMA. So everyone's an MMA fighter now. Any good movements that would up my gains fast for my legs, hips, calves, squats, yo. Squats. Squats and deadlifts. What do you think about weight training while on an extended water fast? Why are you water fasting? Why? And no, not really. You shouldn't be doing intense weight training if you're not eating food. Like if your body is trying not to die, I would not go crazy with the weights. You're going to fucking pass out or something. I swear these live shows are meant for roasting everyone with a question. No, they're not. I just like to cut. I get a lot of questions. I mean, don't forget those of you that are looking on Instagram, I'm also looking at Facebook and I'm looking at YouTube and I'm looking at Twitch. Like there's comments coming from fucking everywhere. So, you know, if there's a, some of you come into a podcast and you ask like, what are we watching today? Well, the podcast started 30 minutes ago. So you would know if you watch them and go back and fucking, I'm not going to repeat everything or you come in and ask a basic question, which is fine. I don't care. I love it all, but it's fun. Don't ask a question. If you don't want some snippy reply, sometimes it's all in good fun. There's no hate. It's fucking fun. If you ask an easy question, I'm going to be like, what the fuck are you asking that for? Go train, man. Stop worrying about that bullshit. Everyone can laugh and then fucking go do it. It's fun. It's fun. There's no bad questions though, but some, there's no bad questions, but sometimes there's very, very, uh, look, there's no bad questions, but you have to admit there's sometimes very, 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 very lazy questions. Meaning you're just asking a question that you're not going to do shit with the fucking information I give you. You're going to do jack shit. You're going to do fucking nothing fucking nothing goose you're gonna do absolutely nothing that's how half-assed you ask the question and when i say you i'm not talking to anyone in particular i'm just saying in general right you just ask a question how do i lose body fat how do i lose belly fat it's like oh you fucking jabroni really you're gonna come in here and ask a dumbass fucking question like that you know that's the kind of stuff i'm talking that's the kind of stuff i'm talking about it's like lazy as shit come on like this question that um what Sero asked about good movements for his hip and calves and stuff like that's great you know you can there's there's other ones too and but he's asking a tactical question and Michael's asking about volume and one repetition mat like th that's a question that's a question that I can maybe streamline instead of rather than googling and looking for something specific how do I lose body fat it's like bro fuck fuck it's like come on do something like. Like pretend, pretend to fucking care. Are you still in touch with Tony Horton and that crew? I, I talk to some of the people sometimes. I haven't talked to Tony in a while. I haven't been directly, I haven't been involved with Beachbody for a while. Great content. I love the fact that you call us out on our bullshit. I need to be called out sometimes. I only call out what I see. And a lot of times I'll call it out because I do it myself. Like I know what it's like to not feel like that's a thing, fam. I know what it's like to not feel like working out. You know why? Because a lot of times I don't feel like fucking working out. So I know exactly what it's like. 
I know exactly what it feels like because a lot of times I don't feel like working out. So I know what that feels like. I know exactly what that emotion, right? And I, I know exactly what it's like to push through it and say, you know what? Fuck it. I need to do it anyway and making it happen. I know what it's like to overcome that too. When starting the elimination diet is the base starting point, meat and vegetables, not necessarily, not all meats. Some people have beef allergies. The thing with the elimination diet is that it depends on how much you remove, right? So you don't have to remove everything. The more you eliminate, the more you're going to figure out what is good and what is bad. If you only eliminate one thing, you eliminate dairy, you're going to figure out if dairy is possibly making you sensitive. But if you don't remove a lot of other things that could be contributing to that, it might not just be dairy or something else might be still inflaming you and you won't think that dairy is affecting you, but it is dairy in addition to grains, but you didn't eliminate grains. So the more you eliminate, you can take it really strict or you can just do a little bit. You don't have to do a hardcore elimination, but the more you eliminate, the more you'll know. Hey Dash, strained my lower back, I believe at work a few months ago and recently did something and got pain again. Are there any workouts in the 90 day Dash you would recommend staying away from for a little while? Um, in your lower back? Um, Andy, I would... I would recommend staying from any of the resistance training just because I can't prescribe anything from you just from what you said. So I have no idea what the problem was to begin with, let alone, I'm not going to say, Oh, just do these workouts. I would try, if anything in X, I would pay attention to the classes, the, the yoga classes on Solnormous X, the yin classes. Those are very low intensity and very passive and you should be able to gauge your pain or discomfort while you're doing that. That could help maybe loosen up whatever is ailing you. Just a suggestion, but not a guarantee. But um, I would be careful with any like strenuous. I wouldn't do any vinyasas or the vinyasa two classes on uh, soulnormousx.com. I would just stick to the. I would just stick to the um, the yin. Chase David, when it comes to timing of your training, what time of the day is more effective for you? You talk about what what's most effective for me personally, or what's most effective, what would be effective for you? A lot of times, like I think testosterone or growth hormones highest in the morning because your body is repairing at night. I love to start my day with a workout. It hasn't happened for me lately, but working out first thing in the morning is great. Like if I had, um, like, it depends. It, it depends. Like if I can get back on that schedule where I'm working out first thing in the morning again, I will. I will because it's excellent. It's a great way to start the day. I love starting my day with a workout. I'd rather work out in the morning or afternoon rather than the evening. If I can, like lately, I've been having some later workouts, but then I get amped up at night and then I'm up too late and it throws me off my schedule. So if I can't get a workout in at least like the afternoon, early mid afternoon, um, I'm probably not going to go and probably skip it because if I get too amped up at night, then you know, then it throws me off that schedule. I'm trying to get back on. So I've been up since the crap. I've been up since fucking like 4 a.m. today, working hard on the reset, drinking a lot of coffee, drinking a lot of coffee so I could steamroll this shit. <laughs> trying to trying to reset my whole schedule and fucking get my stuff back together. So going to sleep earlier and everything. You guys know. I mean, I've been working on some projects where I've been up just super late, but I want to get off that. I want to get back. How do you feel about guys that are natty and look down on guys that run gear? Uh, it's more about themselves. They're self-conscious or low self-esteem. It's like, if you look down on people that run gear, it's like, then fucking run gear then take steroids. I wouldn't look down. I don't give a shit. If anyone takes fucking juice, I don't like it when people lie. I don't like it when people lie that say they don't and they do. I don't give a fuck if anyone does. I don't think it should be illegal. I think you should be able to do what the fuck you want. But I think you should be doing it with blood testing and doing it the right way instead of just taking it from some fucking gym bro in a locker room. Like you're injecting something that's changing the chemical signals in your body. You could fuck yourself up bad, like permanently. Permanently. You got to be careful with that shit. 
But I don't think you should look down on anyone. Make your own fucking choices. Let people make their own fucking choices. Let people make their own fucking choices. If people want to smoke weed, let them fucking smoke weed. If people want to drink alcohol, let them fucking drink alcohol. I don't know about heroin and stuff that's like fucking really addictive. I mean, fucking weed should be legal more than alcohol should be legal. You know, when it comes to like the dangerous aspects of it. that that's like i don't know it's just fucking ass backwards i mean something like supplements like over the counter you know ephedra i mean there, there's certain things that are they really bad for the body like we don't get the real truth from these studies we don't get the real the real truth and what's behind these bans and these legal bans when it comes to supplements but i really think that people should have the right to make their own choices and people should just let fucking let people live let people live if someone wants to buy Yeah, if someone wants to buy a supplement and take it, then let them buy the supplement and fucking take it. If someone wants to inject something and get a little bit bigger and build some more muscle, then let them inject something and build some fucking more muscle. Like, you can smoke cigarettes, right? You can smoke cigarettes, but you can't smoke weed. Like, it's so fucking ridiculous. It's so fucking ridiculous. Like, you can smoke cigarettes, which is far more dangerous. Far more dangerous. Like, like it's not about the danger. That's for damn sure. It's about the money and who's got the money. Who's got the fucking money and the cigarette companies and the pharmaceutical companies and they got the fucking money. So they make the decisions. That's it. That's it. If it's about danger, weed is less dangerous than cigarettes and fucking alcohol. And it's less dangerous than fast food. So... <laughs> You think the legal and illegal stuff is what determines right and wrong? Like, get the fuck out of here. That's why you have to be careful with what you're, you're that, that's why you have to be careful with doctors and the medical community and all those facts that were raised on. Uh, there's, um, I had a great, uh, a great message. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll post it somewhere, but. I don't know. You, you have to be a, be an adult. We have a lot of technology at our fingertips where we can get a lot of information quickly. You know, we can get a lot of information quickly. We can fact check. We or fact. We can fact check. Can't speak. We can fact check things. We can access information in ways we never could before. So you have the ability to find this shit out and learn about your environment. You don't have to just believe whatever you see and whatever you're told. So you have like the ability to, uh, to get this information. Like you said, coffee is a natural thing. Well, I like coffee. Look, I mean, get rid of what I get. If you have results that you want that you're not getting from training, then you need to change up your training. If you're not losing fat, then, and you're struggling and you do an elimination diet, then eliminate it depends on what you want. Are you willing to do what it takes? If you have to cut out caffeine to see if you can lose the extra body fat, then, well, how bad do you want to lose the body fat? But I love my coffee. It's like, well, then test it. Four weeks, no coffee. Are you willing to do that to see if you get results? You know, we as human beings oftentimes say we want something, but then we're not willing to do the fucking work or make the sacrifice to get it. So we just run our mouths. We just talk, talk, talk. And I that quote that I read, right? I, I put it away. The quote that I read, just to, uh, let's see. Oh, that wasn't that quote. That was something else. Let's see if I have. I wrote, well, I wrote another one down. Got some good, got some good quotes this morning. I felt inspired. But yeah, not with coffee. People are, <laughs> I'm not giving away my coffee. I'm not giving away coffee. Hell no. Yeah, well, anyway. But yeah, it's so addicting. Well, sometimes you have to leave stuff. You need to make the sacrifice. And today being Monday, I'll leave you with this, is 
be willing to make the sacrifice for what, you know, put your money where your mouth is, so to speak. Don't talk about losing weight. Don't talk about making change. Don't talk about doing all these things and not be willing to make the sacrifices necessary. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be free emotionally. Sometimes it might not be free financially if you need to get assistance, but there's a lot of things that you can do to get results that just take some fucking effort. So don't be lazy, be willing to work and be willing to make the sacrifices necessary to get the result that you want. So I will see everyone tomorrow for 711. Make sure if you haven't yet commented or checked out that video that I posted on Instagram and here on Facebook, make sure you go check that out. Remember, quadcast every single day, Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Catch me everywhere, so enormous. Podcast, SoundCloud, and Apple Podcast. Catch all the episodes. And if you're interested in checking out my programs, my nutrition classes and workshops, yoga classes, everything that I offer from a training perspective, go to swolnormousx.com. You can send me a message and let me know if you have any questions, but swolnormousx.com for all the deets. And I'll see all of you in there. All right. Big stuff coming this week. So thanks for joining for episode 710. I'll see you tomorrow for 7 i.e. Kraven of the Daily Swole, the most muscular swole cast, beard cast, broadcast, gang cast, and man cast in the realm. Because when I flex, you flex, we all flex our biceps. Mm. <laughs>